Let's talk about survival knives. Well, here we go, back into the wild. This time we're talking about survival knives. I know the title says the best five survival knives, but actually it's whatever was in our bag from the last time we went camping, which seemed like good enough criteria since these days we exclusively go camping to test knives. This video is based loosely on the best survival knives article we wrote a while back, but we tried to weed the choices down to a small group with a good spread across different budget categories. I mean, not too wide, because we still can't afford anything from extreme ratio, so knives above the $500 price line are excluded from consideration by default until those companies start sending us knives. Now as long as we're here, we should talk about what we mean when we talk about survival knives. We mean tactical no-nonsense killers that can operate as your only lifeline in the hardest bullshit scenario that life, the wilderness, or a bad memory before a camping trip might throw at you. Actually, the best definition we've come across is that a survival knife is a bushcraft knife and a tactical knife combined. That's still pretty vague though, so I guess we'll put some numbers up to give the armchair some stop. Ben, you're in the shot! What the hell happened to your sleeves? got to bring toilet paper. Okay, where was I? Right, anyway. That's still pretty vague though, so I guess we'll put some numbers up to give the armchair survivalists a little more content to yell at us for in the comments. Let's say that a survival knife should have a blade that's at least four inches long because it needs to be able to chop and baton reasonably sized branches and logs. It should have some kind of 90 degree corner on it that can throw spark off a ferro rod. And the edge should either be soft or tough enough that it won't chip and can be sharpened on a rock or hard and made well enough that it can stay functionally sharp for the two to four days it takes for you to get out of the situation you don't want to be in. You might also want to know how we tested these best survival knives. We walked around in the woods and chopped stuff, and we tried to start a couple of fires, and we submitted each knife to a thorough regime of harsh elements to find the limits of its corrosion resistance. It was a test of our own devising that's still somewhat controversial around the office, but it's what we did. Now that we have the particulars out of the way, we can run through this list. Really any BK knife made by K-Bar could go on this list, but the BK-7 is the one that's on it, and we don't feel particularly inclined to justify the choice beyond saying that we wanted a bigger knife that could chop good, and this one was close at hand. So the BK-7 chops good. It batons okay, and you can carve with it in a pinch. I usually find that it's hard to carve really thin pieces if the wood is too hard, but you can get what you need eventually if you just work with the blade a little. The highlight of it, and of any Becker knife really, is the handle. It's big and round and comfortable in a way that makes basically every campground task possible. It does rattle around in the sheath a little, but it's such a long, heavy knife that there isn't really much risk of it falling out, and if you really want to hang upside down or something, the retention strap should keep it in place. The finish on the blade is working pretty hard. We didn't have to clean this up very much after the corrosion testing, and after we did, the blade looked pretty much good as new. The cold steel search and rescue knife looks a little malminch tactical these days, but it's also a genre-defining design at this point. It's also the only one on this list with a hollow grind, which makes it a comparatively mean slicer in a world of knives with increasingly thick spines and wedge-shaped edges. The handle is a good example of how to make a boxy geometry comfortable. It's a thick slab of rubbery material that gives a lot of grip in pretty much every scenario, and while there's not much to the sheath, it's pretty secure thanks in part to the contact between the soft material of the handle and the polymer of the sheath. It creates a lot of friction, so even if it didn't have a retention strap, I wouldn't be that worried about the knife falling out. It does slow down the draw a little, though, if you're the kind of person to be worried about fast deployment. There's a pretty thick coating on the SRK, so we weren't too surprised when we didn't see much rust on this thing. 
While we're on the subject of cold steel, the Demco Free Rain is probably our favorite fixed blade to take out right now. Handle-wise, it kind of feels like the SRK, but it's got these deep finger grooves on the top and the bottom, so it locks into the hand a lot more firmly and a couple different grips. Actually, in a lot of ways, this feels like a bigger version of the SRK with a drop point and a flat grind. We liked it more for chopping and carving and really woodworking in general. Part of that is because of the way the handle seats into a grip, but there's also something about the edge geometry that just makes it process wood faster. The free rain runs on stainless steel, so corrosion resistance is top notch. We could have left it in the creek for a week and it probably would have been fine. What really helps with rust resistance though is that the sheath can be taken completely apart so you can get everything dry before storing the knife again. We should also mention that we were testing the MagnaCut version that we picked up a blade show for this video, which you might not be able to get. The free ring comes standard with Oz 10 though, and we beat the hell out of that stuff all the time, so you should be fine with that, we just wanted to show off. By looks, the off-grid backcountry is a little more tactical than the other knives on this list. It's okay for processing wood. Uh, it's pretty easy to control how thick you're carving into sticks, but the geometry isn't exactly optimized for batoning. We usually have to beat the knife down at least halfway through a log before it splits. For cutting up pretty much anything else, it's great. This is one of the thinner survival knives that we use regularly, so it's become our preference for food preparation. Even though the grind isn't especially high in the blade, it seems to have the smoothest cut for a lot of the things we tend to consume most on a camping trip. Whatever your idea of cooking is when you're camping, the backcountry can probably do it. The sheath is another good feature. The way most off-grid knives sit on the belt is really comfortable for the short people in our office in particular, which is one of the reasons we take them out so much. But they're also just good, solid kydex designs with high retention and a comfortable thumb ramp. Of anything else in this video, the backcountry is probably the quickest to deploy. We were surprised at how well the backcountry's blade held up corrosion-wise. We expected to see a couple of rust spots along the edge at least, that would be pretty normal for D2 steel, but it looked fine after a wet day. The Reef F4 is the bushcraft crossover option. It has a high flat grind with a little bit of a convex geometry on the edge and one of the best handles we've ever felt. We rant about this handle all the time, even to people who don't carry knives and don't care to hear it. It's hard to see on the video, but the scales are shaped in a top-heavy kind of way that makes it feel like you're choking up on the blade even when you just have it in a regular grip. The sheath is also one of the better designs we've seen come out lately. It's on a rotating clip so you can adjust the angle as you draw or switch to horizontal carry without having to unscrew anything. We featured it in our Best Horizontal Knives video and article, and we will continue to recommend it for basically every situation, regardless of how appropriate it is. This did do the worst in terms of corrosion resistance, but not in a surprising way. CPM3B is high carbon, non-stainless stuff. It can take a beating and a good edge, but it showed the most rust after a day in the creek. It takes a little bit of work to clean the rust up if it sets in, but it's normally not an issue if you're good about drying the knife up consistently. The Reef F4 was the only one we packed on this little excursion that we could reliably throw any spark with. If we were legit, we would show you all the other knives failing to start a fire, but we don't want to show you failure and you don't want to see it. If we're being honest, this video should really have just been a review of the Cold Steel SRK and the K-Bar BK7 because they're both solid, budget-friendly designs in two good size categories that basically everyone loves. But then we also could have thrown in the Falcon Even F1 as an honorable mention, and then we might have thought, well, that's a classic. It deserves more than an honorable mention, and while we're at it, how could we include the BK7 and not the BK2, which is arguably the best of the K-Bar Becker designs? if internet mongrels are to be believed. 
And speaking of K-Bar, what about the Spartan Harzy Nesmuk, which was made by K-Bar? That one is cool too, and that seems like it should be in this video. And what kind of an idiot would leave out the SC4 or literally any kind of Moro when every list about survival knives in existence agrees that these knives are essential to having any serious bug out bag? Then, by the time we were done adding knives that should have been in this video, we had basically just written the article all over again. So this video gets what it gets. It took us long enough just arguing over how to test these knives because some of us have differing opinions on what constitutes a viable recreation of survival situations. Anyway, go read the article if you want to see more knives.